Another really cool addition to the brush system in ZBrush 4 is the orientation subpalette, uh, which allows the alpha to spin around inside your stroke. So we've got Deco 1 selected. All of these Deco brushes are using the new orientation subpalette to one effect or another. Right now, we can see with Deco 1, we've got a spin angle set to 0.25 and a spin rate set to 1. Let's just see what that looks like. Notice that that alpha is spinning around. My stroke keeps moving forward, but the alpha spins around the, around the center line of that stroke. Let's select Deco 2, see what happens. Similar settings, but one thing that's changed is that spin center, uh, center is now set to 1. And notice how that causes the pivot of the alpha's spin to be right along the center line. So it's as though it shifted the center of rotation all the way to the end. That's what setting it to 1 does. Now watch as we set this to 2. Watch how it's actually going to spin away from the center line. And just keep working that. It's getting farther and farther away from the center line. Now let's go into Deco 3. Our alpha changes. Spin center is set all the way to the end of that alpha, right along the center line. But otherwise, spin angle and spin rate are relatively similar. So this allows me to get a really nice kind of sweeping effect, almost like um, architectural detailing. Deco 4. Spin center is again forcing the uh, pivot of rotation right to the end of the alpha. And now Deco 5, which is combining lazy mouse with the spin effect and then Deco 6, which is using a different alpha and twirling that star within the stroke. Let's take two seconds to be clear about how this is doing its work. Let's select just the standard brush. If we make one stroke, we're very familiar with that, simple, clean. Let's select an alpha like star or uh, alpha 33 we've seen that that just keeps rolling on through now to initiate spin what you have to do is start to turn the spin rate up so let's set this to 1 so a lot of half circles here let's set this to 2 and see what the difference is between these What you'll notice between 1 and 2 is really that the, the uh, arrow is spinning almost, it's spinning completely around. It spins completely around right as it gets up here. Whereas when it's set to 1, it gets close to spinning completely around and then just keeps moving over. S set this to 4, and that's just going to spin around and around and around and around and around and around, where you don't even notice it as a arrow anymore and instead it's just a, a totally different kind of pattern if we lower our Z intensity this could even start to work for fabric some kind of mechanical detailing if our uh, focal shift is set hard enough focal shift is right here Now, we've looked at spin rate. Let's take a second and talk about spin angle. Let's look at that with spin rate set to 0. So by default, the arrow is moving straight through the model. Let's set that spin angle to 0.1. So that has essentially redirected the alpha. It is now pointing up and to the uh, 
to the right. Let's set this to point two. And it's just going to continue to rotate that alpha within the stroke. Notice how point three is now actually pointing backwards. As we go to point four, that's almost 100% backwards, and point five is backwards. So if we set this back to one, what do you know? But it goes back into the forward facing mode. So a lot of your effect for the spin angle is going to be between 0 and 0.5. As you go to point uh, 6, it just starts facing downwards. Now let's take a look at spin center. But in order to see spin center, we are going to have to turn spin rate on. So I'm going to set this to 1. And we've already seen this. The alpha spins around the center of the stroke. Now as I increase spin center, that's going to change. It's going to move farther away from the center line. Set that up to 5. And here we're almost getting a nice lyrical pattern. Let's lower our draw size so we can take advantage of that. And in fact, let's really simplify our alpha. Let's select alpha 28. And let's increase our Z intensity. And there we go. So spinning around the center line of the stroke with some distance because spin center it's going the other way. Now, let's set this to a uh, negative 2, and then to a positive 2. So the effects are quite similar either direction you go, but if I'm going to change my alpha, let's go back to the arrow. And then let's go back to the negative 2. Notice that the alpha helps us see that by setting it to negative and positive. It's really spinning in a different direction. Here it was spinning backwards. With it set to a negative 2, it's kind of spinning forwards. Now how do you use these brushes? How does it fit in? There is of course just the decorative purposes of using this. Let's set this to Deco 6. Sorry, Deco 4. Turn symmetry on. And you can get really nice patterns out of this. Let's reset all of these. that have a lot of complexity to them. But a lot of times stuff like this you're going to sample from photo reference. The real use uh, that I found for this is actually in creating skin details. You can do some really awesome stuff with rotation or orientation I should say. First let's select the standard brush and let's select alpha 58. Alpha 58 if you use it with a drag rectangle stroke and Z sub on, you can cross hatch some pretty decent skin if you're being a little bit more subtle than I am. i just trying to show the overall cross hatching effect. So if that's smaller scale, you can do quite well, which is one of the ways uh, that we use the spray stroke. Got to really lower that Z intensity. But if you really lower Z intensity, you can get some really nice results out of using uh, Alpha 58 and the spray stroke. Occasionally it starts to look like it's too patterned though. And this is where spin really comes in handy. 
So I've, un I've undid all of that. I'm going to go back to the dot stroke. And now I'm going to set my spin rate at about 1. I'm not going to adjust anything else right now. The intensity is on the low side. Needs to be even lower. And now as I run my cursor along the surface, this is just really naturally going to create some really amazing detail. Let's just open this up a bit. And I'm going to set the intensity a touch higher and redo that. key to this really is just moving back and forth, left and right with the Wacom pin. But because I'm moving back and forth, it's pivoting and just really kind of slingshotting between those directions. And in no time at all, I've got some really great skin. This is really actually amazing skin that I can then go in and just start to add some details to. come in with the inflate brush and just inflate some of these edges and add some variety and randomization as well as just some natural characteristics to all of this. So deco brush really amazing for adding skin. Try that to get some really cool alligator wrinkles and adjust focal shift to kind of make these crevices uh, a little bit harder but at the same time get in and experiment with cavity masking or even going to the mask palette mask by cavity that's another way for us to start to treat these two surfaces differently and really take our sculpting to the next level